This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, a couple of simple things. Maybe you've got some idea for a website or a business or a podcast, you know, knocking around in your mind. Well, the second thing is the only way to figure out whether that's worth doing is to get it out to the world. And that can be daunting because well, it's scary to try new things, but not knowing how to set up a website is not an excuse. There are no excuses available with Squarespace. Squarespace allows you to create a powerful website for whatever you're up to. Want to sell something online? Yes! Easy to set up a store with Squarespace. You want to do a podcast? You're starting a YouTube channel? Well, you want a website to complement it. It all starts on Squarespace with a beautiful template that you can customize to your heart's content. Or you can start from scratch, or you can move over from an existing domain. But don't start from scratch. Use a template, like I say. No excuses. And once you've gone through the super easy customization process, there's no updates, there's no patches, there's no tech BS to deal with. And Squarespace also handles all the websitey stuff, podcasts, yes, mailing lists, yes, social integrations, of course, and so much more. Plus 24-7 customer support in case you get stuck, but you probably won't. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash brain food to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And let's get into it. Okay, so we've all heard the story of Jonah being swallowed by the whale, and then, along with his father Geppetto, creating a fire so that the whale sneezes them out, or, you know, something like that. The Bible is weird. Is that is that a Bible story? There is a band called Noah and the Whale. Um, they're actually pretty good, but they come up. Noah, whale, story. Yeah, it's in the book of Jonah. I didn't even know there was a book of Jonah. Who cares? It's all crazy. Whatever the case, being swallowed whole is a fate that has permeated our mythology and stories throughout time. But what is the actual typical progression to death when an animal gets swallowed whole? And are there any animals outside of more commonly known things like tapeworms that occasionally survive the ordeal and go along their merry way, whether by fighting their way out or simply being pushed out at the other end? As you might expect, death for creatures swallowed whole depends on what creatures eat them. Some of the most famous animals known for swallowing prey whole, snakes, actually kill their prey before consuming it, either through venom or constriction. However, in some instances, certain animals take their prey directly into their mouths while the creature is still alive and kicking. Such creatures include frogs, certain fish and birds, varieties of snake, and even people. We're looking at you, goldfish swallowing college students. One especially creepy example of a creature that eats its prey whole is the Kinabalu giant red leech. This large animal, tiny Lovecrafty in horror, preys on a species of giant earthworm native to the jungles of Borneo and sucks the whole thing into its mouth like a giant piece of spaghetti being eaten apparently by another giant piece of spaghetti. While there is some contention among experts, it appears that these worms are swallowed alive, as there have been instances of the leeches having to spit out worms whose size they underestimated, after which point the worm goes on its wiggly way. So what happens to them once inside? It is generally thought the worms die relatively quickly, since the stifling confines of the leech's body aren't exactly ideal for the worm's respiration, causing it to suffocate long before it's converted into leech dookie. In some examples, such as with certain birds, the predator may attempt to stun or incapacitate its prey with its mouth parts before swallowing, though this may simply result in debilitating injuries rather than death. A conscious trip to the stomach is also a legitimate possibility in the case of things like frogs and fish, which commonly push their food to the back of their mouths with little or no injury before swallowing. So, supposing an animal's prey survives its foray into the mouth of its predator, what happens to it next? While some might claim the strong contrast actions of the predator's esophagus is enough to crush the animal, anyone who's thrown up and seen a fully intact french fry from lunch can attest that esophageal contractions are seldom strong enough to crush food, only strong enough to encourage its trip down to the stomach. Once in the stomach, while the most obvious cause of death for animals swallowed alive would be the powerful stomach acid of a predator, it's generally unlikely that this is going to cause the death, at least not in the flesh-melting way occasionally mentioned in Hollywood. Rather, thanks to sphincters, everyone's favorite variety of muscle, the interior of a stomach is largely bereft of breathable air. I, I have to say, this is the first thing I think of. Like. I imagine being swallowed by some huge sort of creature. I don't think I'm going to die in acid. I'm going to be like, there's not going to be a lot of air in there, is there? 
Thus, such an environment would likely cause an air-breathing animal to pass out and die relatively quickly. By contrast, it would take much longer for stomach acid to eat through the skin or outer surface to the point where it would do any life-threatening damage. Even in the case of fish being swallowed alive, the high acid, low oxygen content of the stomach acid and chyme present in the predator's digestive tract would likewise cause it to perish from suffocation fairly quickly. Of course, the next question that's bound to arise when considering this morbid issue is, outside of obvious creatures like certain parasites, can other creatures feasibly survive being swallowed alive? Well, it turns out, yes. As an example, some snails have been known to make the long and undignified journey through an animal's entire digestive tract and come out Shawshank Redemption style on the other end. For example, the Tornatellides boninginghi snail of Japan's Hayajima Island are known to have a small chance of surviving an entire trip through a bird's digestive system after being eaten. We like to imagine this process leaves the snail's shell with a shiny new buff job, though it probably never smells quite the same again. As to how often they survive, Shinokiru Wada and his colleagues at Tohoku University found that when these snails were fed to bird species native to Hayajima Island, about 15% of them survived the trip, with one of them even giving birth after the journey. As for the exact mechanism that allows the snails to survive the trek down the bird's bowels, this isn't clear. However, the researchers theorize the snail's shell, coupled with an ability to seal itself in with a powerful coating of mucus called an epiphram, prevents stomach acid from touching the snail. Additionally, the gastropod's small size ensures that it encounters minimal complications, such as being crushed as it makes its stinky journey. It's even hypothesized that this mechanism might even be an element of the snail's evolution, allowing it to propagate its species about the island via handy transportation inside birds. Scientists have seen similar phenomena in pond snails eaten by fishes and birds. So what about other creatures? Well, in 2012, biologists in East Timor observed a strange worm-like species of snake, known as a blind snake, emerging from the rear end of a toad. As to how the snake survives such an event, the researchers hypothesized this is due to the creature's overlapping scales, which made it resistant to damage. Its worm-like shape, which allowed it to crawl through the toad's bowels, the fact that the toad hadn't eaten recently, leaving a nice poop-free intestine for the snake to climb through, and finally, the blind snake's ability to thrive underground with only minimal oxygen. All that said, unfortunately, the intrepid blind snake died several hours after its triumphant emergence, though it wasn't really clear why. Moving on from there, what about animals that perhaps attempt at least to fight their way out? While most creatures have the sense not to swallow anything alive that has sharp spines, claws, or toxins, it just so happens that there is a kind of creature in which such a scenario has played out multiple times in the past. Enter the snake eel. The snake eel has a barbed tail, which it uses to burrow in the sand. However, when eaten by a fish, it has been observed to use this tail to attempt to bore through the stomach of the animal that ate it. Lovely. However, as far as researchers can tell, these attempts always end up in vain, as the eel inevitably finds itself trapped in the space between the stomach and the abdominal wall, where it often suffocates, though does at least get a little revenge on its killer. Generally, however, such snafus are avoided by the evolutionary instincts of the predator in question. When it comes to the highest evolved of animals, however, that animal's greatest asset, personality, and free thought sometimes override the safeguard. And of course, this is where Dolph... <laughs> Humans enter the picture. For example, in 2016, a drunk man from the Netherlands was coaxed into swallowing a live catfish. Now, for those not acquainted with catfish anatomy, these creatures have sharp spines on their pectoral fins, and in some species, these spines can be quite venomous, used in self-defense scenarios, such as being swallowed by an inebriated Dutchman. The fish ended up getting lodged in his throat, and he was rushed to intensive care, vomiting blood, where the catfish was subsequently and safely removed. The man lived to experience further parts and perhaps swallow other creatures. The fish, however, while successfully achieving its goal of extraction, wasn't so lucky. Despite its valiant efforts to carve its way from the innards of the beast that consumed it, it perished in the fight, likely due to lack of oxygen or being drowned in cheap Dutch beer. But have there ever been any happy endings where an animal has safely fought its way out? Well, yes. One such feat of daring do has been observed from the Bombardier beetle. These critters have the ability to release a burst of highly irritating chemicals that shoot from their insectoid moneymakers with extremely high pressure. You might recall how earlier we mentioned that some frogs tend to swallow prey without incapacitating it first. Well, Shingi Sugiura and Takuya Sato, researchers at Kobe University, observed instances of frogs consuming the beetles, after which point the beetles' defensive mechanisms, once applied from the confines of the frog's stomach, would cause the 
the amphibians to regurgitate the beetle. The beetle, in spite of its trip to the gastric Hilton, generally remained unharmed after the ordeal. Even more impressive is the rough-skinned newt, an amphibian that produces a powerful toxin that has the potential to kill any predators foolish enough to ignore the newt's cautionary orange coloring. The newt's poison is so powerful, in fact, that frogs have been observed swallowing the critter, then succumbing to the toxin so quickly that the newt has time to exit through the frog's mouth before the predator's digestive juices and lack of oxygen take effect. Moving on from there, the Apomis beetle larva has been known to take things a step further. In fact, this beetle and its nightmarish offspring are known as frog hunters. So how does a tiny invertebrate hunt down and slowly eat alive a creature many times its size? In short, the larvae have a tactic of dodging the frog's tongue before being swallowed, then latching onto the creature where they proceed to devour it. In at least one instance, however, the frog actually succeeded in consuming the larva, whereupon it was regurgitated. At this point, the food turned on its dinner, grabbed it with its mandibles, and proceeded to feed, thus not only surviving the events, but ultimately consuming the creature that swallowed it. But let's go back to the beginning and talk about Jonah and Pinocchio. But are there any animals that can swallow people whole and alive? Although there have been some very rare instances of snakes swallowing people, such reptiles have a means of incapacitating you first, mainly through constriction, so you'd be dead before being swallowed, especially considering that the swallowing process in such cases would likely take hours or longer. Crocodiles and sharks, again, rarely consume people, and in such cases the prey would be dead first by being ripped apart or significant damage being done by the predator's powerful teeth and jaws. This leaves whales as the only candidate for swallowing people alive. However, the largest animals on the planet, the blue whale, along with the largest fish, the whale shark, are not equipped to swallow humans, having tiny esophagi which would cause them to choke on us. That leaves the sperm whale the largest carnivorous cetacean. And some experts claim that it may theoretically be possible for a sperm whale to swallow a person whole, though there are two problems with this. One is that the sperm whale's dagger-like teeth would likely kill the prey first, in which case you'd be long dead before suffocating in the whale's several stomachs. But this point is rendered mostly null as sperm whales only feed deep beneath the surface of the water and would never view humans as prey. So any accidental swallowing would have to derive from a rather bizarre sequence of events. That said, there is a commonly told story of one James Bartley being swallowed by a sperm whale in the late 1800s, after which he was cut out of the whale by fellow mariners apparently many hours later. Though his skin had supposedly been bleached white and his eyes rendered blind, he allegedly survived. However, in more recent times, most find this story a bit far-fetched, given the particulars, including the extreme amount of time Bartley supposedly spent in the whale's insides, among other issues with the tail. On top of that, there really isn't much of any hard evidence to indicate that this actually occurred, despite the story making the rounds back in the day. It's perhaps a bit akin to the legend of the dolphin Pelorus Jack that was a worldwide sensation in his day, and even still widely credited today for something he never once actually did, and we did a whole video about that. On the plus side, humans can apparently take heart in the fact that among the multitudes of unpleasant ways we can die, we never have to worry about being swallowed alive, unless Cthulhu emerges from his sunken palace beneath the tides to once more begin his terrible reign over mankind. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to check out our fantastic sponsor for this episode, Squarespace, link to below, and thank you for watching.